Hey everyone, and welcome to day five of our weekly devotions. Hopefully you are caught up by now with all the other content that we provided you this past week, but maybe you're not. So make sure you pause this and go back and go through all that content before you follow through with this. If you're ready, let's dive in right now. We're going to be reading out of Zechariah 9.9, as well as a little bit out of John 12. So check this out. This is Zechariah 9.9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you. Righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So hold on to those words. And this is what it says in John 12. This is uh, John 12, 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm drip branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it was written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So... The Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. So here's our devotion today. Isn't it amazing to think about 500 years before Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the prophet Zechariah declared how he was actually going to be doing it. There are many prophecies in Zechariah that Jesus fulfilled. Just check this out. He will enter Jerusalem on a donkey. We just read that, Zechariah 9.9. He will be sold for 30 pieces of silver, which will be used to buy a potter's field. That's Zechariah chapter 11, verses 12 through 13, if you read that. He will be pierced, and we know that, Zechariah 12, 10. His disciples will run away from him, Zechariah 13, 7. We can look back and trace these different fulfillments now, and it's incredible. But notice the admission by John about himself and the other disciples in John 12, 16. This is what it says. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. They didn't get it at first. Though the disciples knew these prophecies and promises, they didn't understand that Jesus was actually fulfilling them. Only after Jesus was glorified did they begin to put it together. Do you know what the difference was? Before Jesus died and rose again, he told his followers that it was a good thing he was leaving because then he could send the helper. And you and I will know now that this is the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Spirit can help open our eyes as well? Have you ever felt like this disciples? <laughs> it's like a question, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I always feel like a disciple sometimes. Things are right in front of you, but you, don't under you just don't understand, you don't get it. Or you just miss the points. Right in front of you, you just miss the point. When you're reading scripture and it's unclear, ask the Holy Spirit, ask the helper, like we're talking about, to give you understanding. When you're standing face to face with an un unexpected situation or circumstance, pause and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. So I hope you really find that encouraging today. Whatever is unknown to you, whatever circumstance you're dealing with right now, lay it before the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to be your helper. Grace and peace.